Sandy Gabar. And I'm Nate Regeer with Next Element. This is part two in our video blog series, Leading Out of Drama, where we unlock the mystery of drama and introduce you to Next Element's cycle of compassionate change. In our first video, we told a story about a company that was dealing with workplace drama and chose to do something about it. In this episode, we introduce you to a model we use to understand drama. Drama is what happens when people behave irresponsibly to get negative attention. To unpack the mystery, we turn to Dr. Stephen Cartman, a psychiatrist who mapped out how people act in drama. He called it the drama triangle. When people feel unheard or unappreciated, they will often seek negative attention instead. Because hey, if you can't get positive attention, negative attention is better than none at all. The persecutor verbally attacks or blames others, saying things like, can't you do anything right? Or, it's all your fault. Their behavior is disrespectful and condescending. The victim overadapts, putting themselves down, believing they're the source of other people's problems. They allow themselves to get taken advantage of by not sticking up for themselves or their boundaries. The rescuer involves themselves in other people's business without being asked. Under the guise of helping, they enable people to become dependent on them. Each of these roles needs each other in a dysfunctional way, justifying each other's behavior and enabling the drama to continue. For example, if I play the persecutor role, I might say something to Sandy like, why are you so lazy? Can't you get anything done? If I play the victim role, I might respond by saying, you're right, Nate, I just can't do anything right. Or I might see Nate struggling on his report and play the rescuer role by offering advice like, why don't you left justify the margins so your boss doesn't have to send that report back again for another revision? If I play the victim role, I might respond by saying something like this. Sandy, thank you so much. I don't know what I'd do without you. In both examples, the drama roles reinforce each other with negative attention while nobody takes responsibility for healthy communication. Over time, these types of interactions become the norm, infecting your culture like a virus. Which roles do you play in drama? Chances are the way it goes down is pretty predictable. And over time, most likely it's become a habit that has grown within your company, your team, even the entire organization. Somewhere along the way, maybe you've even lost track of the time, the energy, and the money it is costing you. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the workplace consequences when leaders lead from within the drama triangle. Because remember, drama, while it's good for ratings, it's, it's bad, bad for, for business. business.